Welcome everyone to a new gameplay series on Advanced Tactics Gold. It's really been an exciting build up for me to get into this series. Uh, just a quick comment for those of you who are only interested in gameplay, I'll be going through how I made the scenario and all that for probably the first five minutes, so you might think about jumping forward uh, about five minutes to see if that's where I'm starting the actual gameplay. So let me talk about what I did. Let me just jump through all the starting options I used. Um, normally I use costly research, but I didn't this time. It's something we can change still. I mean, the, the jury is still out on what I want to do for research. Uh, I probably did Pangeic, one of these two, and these are my normal settings. I, I highly recommend these settings to anybody else as well. Mirrorish makes the game pretty balanced for, bo for both sides. Stone Age means you don't have so many options at the start. Also gives you a, more of a feeling of progression, I feel. And then one town start, it's kind of same kind of, it depends on if you want to start jumping right into the action or if you want to expand something more like civilization style. You know, the 4X, expand, uh, explore, expand, etc. We don't need to explore, so it's really a 3X game. But So I, ma I make the game, actually this is hilarious. These are exactly the two options that I was given for my game. So this could have been, <laughs> for all intents and purposes, the exact map that we were going to use. I don't, it doesn't look that great. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, it's pretty barren of diversity. So um, this would be Japan over here in the top right and China over here in the bottom left. Middle Kingdom versus Kyoto Territory. Advanced Tactics Gold, in case you don't know about anything about this game, it it's like a World War II sandbox simulator or operational level game. I don't know how to describe the strategy like level. Um, but it basically takes World War II's time frame, the weapons and the vehicles, all the armor, the airplanes are all the same, except for it puts them into the framework of like an open, like it's a sandbox. Uh, it randomly generates scenarios, so we can see this is historical, Japan versus uh, China. And by the way, if I go to settings, here's the resource uh, research modifier stuff. But just as easily, I could make another game and quickly generate something new, and it would give me uh, Japan versus the Arabs. Which is probably not something that we saw. Oh, sorry, China versus the Arabs. Okay, yeah, it's already something that I don't think was in World War II. I think the Arabs were mostly fighting on the Allied side. And now we have, it looks like the Russians versus the Arabs. So you can just keep doing these games and it doesn't care if it gives Japan versus Germany or the United States or the whatever, the independent London, whatever this group is, versus the New Union. This is the Allies versus Germany, so this would make sense. But you get the point. Now I'm gonna load my custom uh, scenario. I actually would, I'd go into more detail about this, but I'm just gonna show it real fast. Um, I spent uh, some time on my most my most recent stream of Advanced Tactics Gold, actually going through all my design decisions here, but I'm just gonna give you kind of the once over of that. If you're interested in seeing how to edit the terrain and all that, you can go to that most recent stream of, of Advanced Tactics Gold. And we still want to think about if I want to modify the research. If I did anything, I would do times two. It's going to be a bit prohibitive to do that. In theory, it should be pro also prohibitive to the AI, but the AI does work with um, some bonuses. Anyway, so let me talk about this. Originally, the map had probably... It was probably a lot more open, and I added a lot of the diversity here. Now, I, I'll, I like it. I like it a lot when you add a lot of, you know, a variety of terrain. It also helps kind of make you or force you into strategic choices. Like, okay, this is a really nice area for armor. So is this because of the mirror. But the forest, the mountains, I mean, you're going to have to make different decisions here. I mean, if AT guns catch, catch the tanks in the forest here, it's good night armor. So it's nice, it makes you think about things in a different way. Um, originally I had this, even, I mean the map, the first like finished map that I was gonna go with had a little bit less water in some places, especially away from the front. Um, and here it actually had a little more water. And I decided to cut back on that because I want more frontage. I think that there's an interesting game mechanic after thinking for a while about this, where, or at least a game we can force an interesting mechanic. By having more frontage, it'll make, well, the AI, but mostly me, choose between spreading my forces evenly across the front 
or really you know, abandoning some positions or very lightly defending them in favor of mass concentrations of forces other places, which can kind of lead to like schwerpunkt. Or we can do this um, counterattack mentality, which would probably be more evenly distributed along the front, or even defense in depth. But that's I don't think that's very effective until you have enough forces to defend in single depth. <laughs> defense in depth is usually only useful if you can defend. Uh, <laughs> you need enough people to populate the front once before you can populate it twice. So, so I think that's about all I wanted to say about this map. Um, it has this very linear progression from one road from the road to the other. This section here and this section here is cut off, so it'll require engineering to build roads to those. Um, supply will be kind of an issue. It won't be if you're sticking to the main corridor, but it will be if, for example, I left this, um, I added this in, this little like choke point that we can squeeze through, but you'll have terrible supply issues going over a stream, through marsh. Um, so it, unless you bring an engineer and build, because the Japanese base is here, it's, it's the same as the last map where I was showing you with the Japan and, um, by the way, I'm called the Kamatochi, and this is the evil empire. So this is supposed to be kind of a fictitional or fantasy world, but um, you could, if you want, put your own historical constraint on this. Maybe this is somewhere in China. Uh, anyway, so the Kamatochi, by the way, just to elaborate on why I chose this name, I made this up. I asked somebody what is land of turtles or turtle land, and that is what it is. And since that, that is what Tortuga is, well, that's our kingdom. And I actually chose, like, this is Tortuga-san, and I took some input from my supporters. Um, so we'll see some of those generals in the game. Okay, so I think I described enough about this, how long we've been going on. Seven minutes. Okay, so let's get into the game now. Um, I think I'm going to leave research just where it is. Uh, we'll see. This will be the, one, one of the first maps I've done where it's... Uh, cover your ears. It's a little loud. One of the first maps I've done with normal research in a long time, so we'll go ahead and start with that. Okay, so the first couple of turns are hopefully going to be pretty quick. The first one, we're just going to create a whole bunch of divisions and send the riflemen out on trains. The trains eventually are going to be more useful um, to bring supplies to the front, as you'd expect. But in the beginning, I'm going to divide them into groups of five riflemen and one train and just send these guys along the tracks in the various directions. So we want to get raws as quickly as possible. I wonder if we can get this raw with just people. 40, 80, yeah, I guess not. Wait, this is, oh, okay, even the territory next to us is considered enemy territory. So we're going to actually even make a railway, <laughs> I mean a, a train, with a rifleman to go up and grab this raw. It's really minor, but that difference of one raw, we're gonna change this, by the way, this minus 120 is just because we're gonna supposedly build another six trains. We're not gonna do this. In fact, we're probably gonna invest totally in political points for the first turn, because I wanna get enough political points to be able to build something here. And mainly the decision is gonna be between armored cars and light tanks. We will eventually get light tanks, but the question is, um, do we get armored cars first? And probably the answer will be yes. Anyways, we're going to focus a lot on political points. Um, what the idea is, is to get engineers. So that's, speaking of, probably what we'll be getting some of. I want to get 40, and then I probably need horses as well, so we can see how quickly my political, my desired political points is going to, are going down. <laughs> uh, 40 and 10, that's going to be enough. Yeah, I think that's going to be enough. We have 0.7 left over for God only knows why. Uh, okay, let's do more trains then. More trains. This is not Factorio, but... <laughs> or any of those other open TTD. A lot of good games with trains involved. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... And train. Get this guy to go this way as well. We'll take that raw. He could actually come back, but I might drop off the riflemen here and send them loose on foot just to start capturing territory. Uh, doesn't seem like a bad idea. I can split them off, and then the train can come back and rejoin the headquarters. 
we'll leave it there for now. We'll think about that for half a second. Um, one bad thing about this game is it doesn't have an undo button. Um, you can make a very simple mistake that doesn't have any impact on the game, and there's no way to undo it. Two ways of dealing with that. You can save a lot and just reload. That's perfectly acceptable, of course, because it's basically forcing an undo button. Or alternatively, you could just abstract it as um, an error of your you know, subordinates. Okay, somebody made a mistake. It wasn't me. <laughs> or you can pretend even that you were the one who made the mistake. But, you know, if I'm role-playing, I never make mistakes. It's always someone else who messed up. Anyway, so let's transfer another five rifles and a train. Um, I am going to... So the trains can carry, I believe, 20. 20, yes. So one of these trains is going to be the lucky train. By the way, I really need to capture this city. How many trains do we have left? Three, good. So I really need to capture this city, so I'm definitely going to send a train fully loaded to take that. Well, not fully loaded. It doesn't have to be fully loaded, but it has to take that. And it looks like, if I zoom in here, I believe I saw a railroad, yeah, running this way. So we can actually take it and can we can keep going anyway. One, two, three, four. Yeah, we'll end up here no matter what. But we'll manually move it here just to make sure, unless you actually occupy these um, territories of real strategic value, you don't automatically get them. So my zone of control spreads out, but you'll, the only times you'll see that isn't true is when there's something of value. It doesn't automatically occupy it until the next turn. So you have to actually move in and take cities, and you can see this oil hasn't been taken. Um, so let's take a new one. And we'll transfer. So this is the one I'll actually get f at full capacity. One train, 20 rifles. And these guys are going to move just as well. So you can see it's 80 here and 80 here. Since I don't know, if I click here, I don't know where they're actually going to go. I'm going to click here and then manually move them down here. First thing to do always when you take a new city is attach it to a headquarters. Otherwise, it's production, even though it's production at first is zero. Um, but otherwise, its production is going to be, well, uh, just completely wasted. And that's not good. I think we'll probably do staff first. Maybe riflemen. So I'll put those options up. Okay, and we're going to want another train going this way, and then some riflemen just to take this oil. Um, so the way I see it, how many trains do we have left? Two. So we'll, we'll need both of those. We'll have one train go this way. One train go this way, and then this fully loaded train is going to go up this way through Okayama and keep going. So, in fact, we, we don't even have enough trains to do all I want to do. When this train gets back, so I guess he will... Yeah, I guess we will split these guys up. The question is who to transfer, and this is doesn't seem like a important question, but whoever we transfer is going to lose more readiness and probably lose a little bit of action points. Considering the movement through this territory is 40 per, our infantry only needs 80 action points to move to, even 100 action points only gets us two. So I'm gonna force the infantry to move for a second time, and our train might actually be more valuable, <laughs> oddly enough. In fact, I didn't have to do this at all, um, stupidly. So this is a, a perfect example of when you can't undo things. <laughs> Our train would just as easily have... Um, I could just move back with these guys and sent another group of riflemen over here. But I didn't do that. It's already too late. These guys could move. Why not? We need to make sure that we're in supply. I'm sure that we're in supply there. But yeah, we're already starting to get to the point where we're running out of supply. That's probably because going over a stream is pretty prohibitive. Um... Okay, so another train, more riflemen. Uh, let's do a train with, so this will go here and this will go here. Yeah, so do this one backwards. So we'll never know how that one went, but it doesn't matter anyway. And the last train is leaving the station. Okay, well, I don't know if there's any... We could put 10 riflemen. I probably want some riflemen to go capture the soil. I think I'll just do 10 and 
10. So I'll do group like this and you will go here as well. Yeah, it didn't make a difference. And my last group of riflemen, lots of political points just to make these new divisions. So my last group of riflemen are gonna go over and take this oil. Very good. So a solid first turn, we did about as much as we could. We need those engineers to upgrade RAWs, we need them to build a vehicle factory. And we're actually gonna sit on our current supplies, which is 886, that's barely enough. We're gonna need to, to create some stock, uh, stock up on some supplies eventually, but for the time being, I want political points more. Oh, I see what I need to do. I want to do 20 here so that I can get rid of this 0.7. So that'll give me enough supply, I think, to last for hopefully as long as we need it. Okay, good. So that is probably our first turn. And how are we doing on time? 15 minutes? Good. So we'll have enough time to get to two, maybe three turns this this episode, which is nice. Um, this is going to take me to 66. And then I'm going to need 14 to get to 80. OK, that's doable. But I need more than 14 to get to 80. I need 80 plus, probably do armored cars. 18, I'm mean, sorry, 16. Get to the 16 plus 22. Yeah, I'm gonna need all 40 for that turn, but that's fine. Okay, it's just doing some math in my head to figure out how I can get both a factory, a gun factory, no, sorry, a tank factory, which is gonna cost 80 political points to build, and then also get either an armored car or a light tank, but we can't get the light tank on the same turn, so we'll probably go with the armored car. And that kind of makes sense in the beginning, you wanna expand, hit them hard, and Armored cars are really bad against, well, not even really bad, but they're not that good against light tanks, but we don't expect to face enemy light tanks for a while. So let's cross our fingers and hope I did everything here. I think I did. And end the turn. Okay, so now we can see what the AI did. That is, is that as loud for you guys as I as it is for me? I have my volume down to like 6% out of 100. And let me just... Hopefully that's not too loud. I'm going to turn it down a little bit more. There's like a, a little drum roll. So they did not capture the city on the first turn, which they could have done. But um, I didn't talk a lot about the AI bonuses. AI gets a lot of bonuses. Um, they're, so when we see the city, you can see that it went from 0 out of 2,000 to start to only 300. It only repairs 300 points per turn. But I think that AI repairs at four times that rate something like that. So they actually only take like two turns to completely repair a city, whereas it'll take me like eight. So uh, seven, I guess. Well, eight, if you conclude the turn, I conquered it. So I mean, that's a little bit of balancing in that the AI is not smart, but to make up for their ineptitude, <laughs> we give them uh, these kind of things. So good, I didn't even have to conquer this raw. My Your zone of control does push. So there's like some propagation of zone control. You can see zero here, but here, sorry, five for there. So this zone of control somehow pushed its way over. Um, zone of control should be, yeah, I'm sorry. Zone of control is this, but how is, I don't know how the calculations are done for where the borders flow to. I thought it was zone of control related, so five, and then that somehow must push it out. I don't know. So we don't have to conquer this raw either, so that means this train can actually come back or drop off, or I don't know what, the, what we want them to do. Do we, for example, want... Okay, so I know what I want to do first, which is create a new division, and get 20 engineers, oops, and two horses. It's easy to click too many times because the when you click on something, the first one pops up. So if you click this, you're like, oh, okay, that's one, two, but you're actually that number plus one, the original one that you started with. Okay, anyway, so we have our engineering group here. We're gonna move one of them north um, I think it's th two tiles in between, so you have to go only every three tiles for anything you construct. 
So I think I'll go ahead and move, I'll build one here. What does this look like? Can we move down here? I could build one here as well. Factory, factory, or I could do factory and factory. We're probably gonna build here, so one, two, three. Yeah, so we might as well do one right there, which is fine by me. So we'll move that engineer there. We can see the cost to build stuff. He does not have yet enough political points. We need 80. He has 65, or we have 65. Just as I was saying that we're, we're not gonna have, uh, okay, so we need 50 here, no, 40. Um, 50 and 10, good. 40, 10, 50, yeah, good. Okay, so now we can actually move these trains forward as well. This guy's probably gonna move this way. We might, he might be the person we drop off and they can move to Ostrio. Because otherwise the trains can't go there. We have to drop off. I don't think this infantry is gonna get there either. Also, we should check supplies. Okay, you can move here. Yeah, and as I thought, even though he doesn't have enough action points, full action points, it would cost uh, 40 to move here anyway. So even if <laughs> even if these only cost, uh, this one would surely cost 40. So then it doesn't matter. You can only move two axes at 40. Because of the um, penalty you get for entering an unknown territory. Basically, this is abstracted. I've, I'm sure I've mentioned this a bunch of times, but... If you're in your own friendly territory, you can just march on the road or march, in, march on a beaten path. You don't have to be looking around, but if you're in foreign territory, you have to do reconnaissance and can't just charge forward blindly. Okay, so you can come back, but let's start with the guys in front first. We know where you're going. You're going this way. And we want somebody to actually capture this town, so let's do that. Now the group with five, let's have them move down for this oil because they're going to take a while to get there. And the group with 10 needs to move this way because we're going to want to get that raw. Oil is very important, don't get me wrong. In fact, it's, at, you know, after like the very early game, it becomes more important, much more important. Usually as soon as you get some point, at some point when you round the corner with raws, uh, you're done with them for the rest of the game. You, you've, you've surpassed your need. It's not completely true. You can run into problems like, you know, there was a game where I had to build it. I, I wasn't building airplanes. I finally unlocked them with research. And then the raws I needed to build airplanes really quickly uh, ended up drying me up. But that's, that's okay. That can happen. Oh, okay. So this guy will go here. It's nice. And you, you might as well just start pushing this guy forward. But the thing is, I actually want to transfer to him with land capacity. A horse. I can't. I can. So basically, it says 30 out of 0, but I'm just transferring the horse to this division by forcing the horse to walk. So you can just transfer divisions locally, even though, like, you can't, there's no rail capacity. I'm moving with no rails. But you can do it even though it costs some capacity because uh, I'm moving the horses directly on their own accord. It's just using the horse movement points to get there. So we do want one horse. One horse carries 10 troops. So now you can see this is down to 55. That was 20 to get here and then 25 to move off the road between these two hexes. But I think that's gonna end up paying dividends anyway because um, infantry usually moves three hexes. It's 30 to enter and you have 100. But horses can move five on the road or four anywhere else because it's 20, five for these and then 20 for the roads. So it's usually a huge advantage to use horses. And we'll probably, as soon as we have, you know what? That's a brilliant idea. How much do horses weigh? I'm gonna transport a horse along with my train as well. Weight is only one, good. So we can actually throw on, <laughs> one of our trains is gonna just take a horse over here, which is gonna be for the infantry group. I guess this one, which eventually, um, undocks or unloads at Okuyama and moves to Ostu. Because this guy probably won't get there as fast as the trains and stuff will. Okay, first thing I should always do is make sure that these are have a headquarters so you don't just produce supply or some resources that go nowhere. And kind of my typical setup is 
this 41, 50, uh, political points, supply, and then other junk. Because these are the two most important things, in my opinion. Okay, so you actually should move... Oh, you could move here. I could transfer a horse, and then you could be the group who does this. So let's... Wait. This train has 90, so even better. Okay, so this train with 90 is going to be the one that gets the horse. Okay, it's just a horse and a train, which is fine. And then that means that this group, five riflemen, there's no divergence, there's not really any divergence up here, which means that one, maybe two trains is all that's needed to get all the things. I think because we're going to move a lot faster, I'm I'm using all my trains very aggressively. So we'll probably get to the middle point before the AI, before the China. I'm pretty sure we're gonna take Yanping. Now, if you see oil and raws and all these things, and previously I used to really try to take those out of the hands of the, of the AI. Ah, I recently learned that the AI does not even need oil or raws. They, they, they ignore resources completely for requirements. So you're not actually damaging the AI by taking it out of their hands. The only thing you can do is take it for yourself and then get some benefit out of it. But otherwise, like bombing it doesn't do anything. I hope that bombing cities lowers production, but you know, maybe I'll, somebody in the comments might know this. Please speak up if you do. Okay, so that is that. I think that, I mean, I need some trains home. <laughs> we have six total out there. One is here. Two, three, four, five, six. Yep, they're all gone. Uh, I probably can move this horse onto this guy, who is going to be the group that goes to Okuyama and dismounts, and just transfer the horse to them. Well, no, no, no. I guess what I'll do is this. So this guy got this far, which means this is considered friendly territory next time. So I can move. Uh, let's start with this guy. 10, 20, 30, 40, 60. 80, 100. Okay, so this is as far as I can go, and that's true for both of them because it's 10, 20, 30, but then 50, 70, 90, and we don't have the 20 needed to move into Okuyama. The good news is this guy will get to Okuyama. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so he'll stop there, actually. So we can have both of these guys meet here, but, I mean, hey, if... Yeah, I guess we'll just have them both meet there, drop off their troops, and then they'll both move back together. We won't need them any further at that point because this guy can move to... Sendai, and the oil is not that important. I can capture it an extra turn later. Um, is it? <laughs> or is it? <laughs> or maybe it is important. <laughs> uh, the games that this game, you know, the games your mind plays when you're trying to think of all the permutations of all the different ways you can move forward and trying to do things efficiently, it hurts. So. Yeah, I guess what we're going to do is transfer these guys all back. I'm going to do that because I want some rail capacity. We don't have it this turn because our rail was used to move, but the rail cap for this unit is now going to be like 2,000 or something. I forget. I think it's 2,000 per railroad or uh, train. Hmm. Okay, last thing we actually have to do is, now that we have this empty division, let's move our engineers into them. Horses, as I said, they can carry 10 each. It's pretty cool, so you can see uh, this is 20 foot, that's how much they weigh. The horses weigh 2, but they can carry 20. So 20 out of 20 is carried, and we move at the speed of a horse. That's nice. Okay, let's move this guy. I think... We'll upgrade, we could upgrade from the back forward, but we might need a road here to keep these guys in supply. Or a road here would also be really good. This guy's gonna use up the action points we need, I mean engineering points and, I, I mean, not even engineering points, political points we need on the factory. And I think it's 40 to upgrade a raw. 
from level one, I mean, to from level one to level two at least. You can go to level three, which costs more, but um, I. Th so is there a raw on the way to Okayama? Just this one here. It's a little too out of the way. I think we'll just move this guy here and then. If I move him here, we can upgrade this raw and then just make a beeline for Okuyama. Huh. It's interesting because the raws will be pretty well protected for us. But one of our oils, and if we can secure this city and take this oil, one of their oils is going to be heavily contested, which means oil might be a problem for us. We'll just stay on. We'll just have to be on our game upgrading. Hmm. I think we'll just move this guy. We can probably supply this guy. We need to connect this. Yeah, we need to connect it. So let's move this guy down here. It's the closest raw to then moving immediately over to Okuyama. So let's do it that way. Okay, I think that's everything for this turn. We are building, so we don't need to do that anymore. Let's just go 100% political points because I need to get up to, was it 80 plus 22 is 102. Well, that's not going to happen. How far away are you? You have 40 engineering points and how much do you need? Wait, wrong one. Tank factory. Yeah, it's going to require 80. And we're going to be at 106. So we'll be able to build it next turn. Oh, 106. That is enough to get the armored car. So 80 plus 22 is a 102. So we'll have almost nothing left, but it's enough. Okay, good. So horses. We should have put a horse on these guys. Uh, it's not worth it now. It's fine. They can just make their own way. Any other horse, the only other people need horses. I mean, I guess we can make a new division with the five riflemen and a horse. Where will they want to go? I guess to the front. It's not gonna cause any problems. Doesn't cause like any extra supply for a horse and rifleman to move, so let's do that. It's just gonna save us a little bit of train capacity using, uh, we don't have to use it. And I think it's best for us I haven't done the calculations, but it, is it best for us to move along the road? So this is a straight shot. Boom. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. But we, if we connect here instead, we can get, if we were using the road, we can get five instead of four. I think I'll just... I think I'll go, you know, let's try just doing that. Let's not overthink it too much. Okay, so let's end the turn. Can I get one more? No, it doesn't look like it. Looks like it's pretty much time to call this episode to a close. They did take the second city now. We have three, so. Um, but again, because of the, the issues I already alluded to, it's actually not even a, not even a benefit. So we'll move here. We took this oil. Um, we can't go any further. We'll be out of supply. So we can't. that's it. That's all we can do. I guess we'll move up and push our borders further that way. Um, you can build something. Okay, so let's do the interesting thing, which is we're going to build a tank factory. And you're going to this raw, so we'll move this guy forward so you can start building a road from that raw. And what is it going to cost? Yeah, it's 40 political points. He has the engineering points needed, which is just a way of making sure your engineers are not doing too many tasks in too short a period of time. Each turn is supposed to be a month, but I mean, you can see from this date, this number itself, the actual date is completely meaningless. <laughs> so, all right, let's progress our spread of trains. Okay, we can either get to the raw, which is 70, or we can get to oil, but we can't get to both. 
Well, I think we have to favor getting to the raw because it's more important in the very beginning. We're at 230. Now, oil's still going to be a problem, big problem, as you'll see. But, okay, we got our next city. That's good. This one will get the same production set up. Supply and probably infantry riflemen again on this one. So this one is probably past the point where it's now going to go to 20, 30, 50. Perfect. This one is 40, 10, 50. I'm just trying to take advantage of a little rounding error. <laughs> As I would. Min-max the crap out of things. <laughs> and we're going to want this at 40, 10, 50. Next turn when it actually starts producing points. Okay. Uh, so we got this. And this needs to produce something as well. Now, if I didn't do any research, what you can see is I could build 16 Jeeps. They cost two raw, whatever. It's not really good. Jeeps are nice for reconnaissance, quite nice for reconnaissance. I think 50, no, 25. But what you're gonna see is armored cars, I think provide five recon points. Everything's normally like one or two. So um, I'll just put this down to zero because we'll, we'll have a better use for it in a second when I decide to commit to armored cars. I'm going to commit to this. There's lots of other interesting options. I mean, one of the things I want to play around with in this game is using the subformation model design to build specific tanks, special tanks. That's pretty cool. Um, it's a whole system that exists that you can like, instead of building this generic light tank, whatever that means, and having every uh, nation using the same exact light tank, you can actually randomly generate a model. Now we need first to research light tanks before we can do that, but it's a moot point because we're going to do armored cars. And now, instead of doing jeeps, we're going to do armored cars. So I could do like something like 50-50, mm, but I don't even think I want 8 jeeps. 8 jeeps is much more reasonable than 16. We just don't have a, re a purpose for this. But the reason why I don't really care about them is because although jeeps have a recon of 25, these have a recon of 10, which is, that's great. So if I have three armored cars, they actually have more uh, reconnaissance than a Jeep. And Jeeps just don't fight very well. Let's just do the full up comparison so we can look at what we're dealing with here. 45 versus, and 30 versus, I mean, something insanely more powerful. And considering the recon is not that much different, uh, these can also carry more. <laughs> you get five carrying capacity with an armored car. so. Basically 50% more carrying capacity per cost. <laughs> so we're just gonna go with 100% armored cars. They'll be our recon and also our combat unit in the very beginning. It does take a lot of raws to do this. You can see we're just barely squeaking even, but we should uncover another raw eventually. And furthermore, we'll upgrade this raw just as soon as we can, which won't be this turn, but next turn we're getting enough political points. I can probably just invest that into upgrading this raw right away. I don't remember what it costs to build road. Let's just check real fast. If I was to do this, it would be 20 engineering points and 20 raw. Okay, that's good. So it doesn't take political points to build roads, which means good. That with enough engineering points, he currently has zero because he built that factory this turn. But when he gets here, if we have the raws, which, you know, after we upgrade this, hopefully we'll be able to manage that. Um... Then we can start building road to connect things over here. So we'll have two paths from Tokyo, our capital city. I didn't mention that, there's one capital city and five normal cities. This is 20,000 production, this has 8,000. Same for the Chinese. Now when we take over Yongping, because I'm pretty sure that's gonna happen, we don't actually get their full production capability. We actually only get the ability to build um, political points, pretty much. And even then, it's at double the cost, so it doesn't, there's not a huge snowball mechanic that if you take over one enemy city, it's already over. Um, you're just denying the enemy of that production facility, which is still pretty important. Uh, also, because we're playing against the AI, I don't even know how much that's true. <laughs> the AI does cheat a fair amount. So, Okay, so then we did our two there. These guys should both stop here if our math was correct. 90 and 100, it was. So what I can do here is move everyone into one group. Uh, the rifleman wise, and then move my train into the other group. 
And because it's only 75 readiness uh, hit, which is divided among the two, so it's average. One was at 100, one was at 75, this average is 87. These should be, I mean, without a doubt, they should be both up to 100 readiness at the start of next turn. So we've gone 40 minutes, a very long opening episode. We've done three turns. We're pretty much at the point where we can stop. I mean, we have to advance a few more troops, but we can do that at the very beginning of next turn. So, I mean, at the video, <laughs> then we can advance to the next turn. So uh, because this is the first episode in the series, I would really appreciate it. You only hear this once in the series, but just because it is the first episode and I, it improves visibility on uh, YouTube, if I can just ask you to press thumbs up or you know give the video a like. Um, other than that, I'm really excited about this series, and I, re I actually already recorded like two episodes of this. I started playing through this game, and then I wasn't happy with my enthusiasm and the pacing. I tried to move a little bit faster in this one to keep it entertaining. So I really have a goal to make this an, like an, in an interesting series because I want people to be interested in this game. I really love Advanced Tactics Gold, and I think that it's absolutely worth picking up and absolutely worth playing. And I, I even wanted to do, after this, um, I want to do Decisive Campaigns Barbarossa or Case Blue or something like this, uh, which is a, it's a very similar type of game. I think I mean, it's made by... I, I also want to give a shout-out to Vic, the design, one of the designers of this game, Advanced Access Gold, he's one of the people who got me like going with um, YouTube videos at all. So I I made Advanced Access Gold videos first. It was the first thing I really did. And Vic, at some point, I, I don't know if I mentioned it to him or how it even came about, but he promoted my videos on his on his uh, blog or whatever. And I'm, I'm not sure there's... Who knows if even a hundred people read that blog, but it was enough that some videos started to be watched and it inspired me to keep going. So thanks to Vic, real tip of the hat to him. Uh, I've really appreciated my interactions with him. So just, there's good people behind the designs of these games. Okay, so that's gonna wrap it up. Uh, until the next episode, thanks for watching. Press the like button. <laughs> I won't say it again, I swear. And then uh, uh, I'll see you next time, so. Until then, take care.